Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, how big can you get naturally? But because this is going to require an amount of brain power that far exceeds my tiny French peanut brain, I'm going to have to resort to the help of the geniuses at nadionaut.com. Because as we all know, if you're a natural bodybuilder and you want to achieve greatness, this is the website to visit. They have all of the answers, they know everything, and if you disagree with them, you are just a blue pill better. So, in the article, How Big Can You Get Naturally, they give an answer that they think is reasonable, one that I believe to be highly idiotic. So let's discuss it. Let's go through the article, and I'm going to pinpoint exactly the issues with our reasoning and the problems I see nowadays with the natural community as a whole because you will see that these thoughts don't come out of nowhere. In reality, they are the result of a collective brain, and that collective brain is the brain of a DL. A DL is someone who is small and will be small forever because the way they think is improper. So the introduction of the article starts with muscle growth, because of course, we're going to talk about how big you can get. Well, you get big through muscle growth, aka hypertrophy or hyperplasia, whatever you want to call, call it, it doesn't really matter. In this case, they have decided that muscle growth is dependent on a number of factors that they have ranked. The ranking goes as follows. 1. Body chemistry. 2. Frame. 3. Muscle insertions. 4. Response to training. 5. Age. 6. Stress. 7. Muscle fiber distribution. 8. Training. 9. Nutrition. 10. Sleep. And 11. Overall health. We see immediately that the top 3 is dependent on genetics, which is not a surprise. That type of people, the type of people that are small and try to find excuses as to why, are the ones that blame genetics all the time. So, in this case, they say that if you don't produce enough tests, you'll never be big. If you don't have a big frame, you'll never be big. And if you don't have the proper muscle insertion, you'll never be big. I would tell you right now that for me, these are not number one, two, and three. They are important, yes, of course, it's undeniable. But since they are outside of your control, it is unreasonable to rank them so high because at the end of the day, they don't have the potential to influence the bulk of YouTube fitness to that extent because we're all dealt random hands that, again, are outside of any of our control. I would have put training at number one. And that should, by the way, be obvious that the onus of size and of your results is dependent on you, on your responsibility. But of course, if you put training number eight, that absolves you of all of that because it's low in the list. So you can always say, well, I train really hard and properly, but I get no results because body chemistry is so much more important. That is not true. And I've spoken about that times and times again, but body chemistry is a passive. For people who play video games, uh, you know the difference between a passive and an active. A passive is something that just happens. Your character has a passive. So maybe his passive is that in a, a range of five inches around him, he gives extra health points to all of his allies. Re regardless of what he does, that happens. That is your body chemistry. Then you have an active. An active could be a spell, okay? I, when I press E, I'm going to, to throw a, ja a javelin that is going to inflict damages to any target. I hit. That's an active. One is cognizant, the active. The other one isn't. The problem is that, in this case, body chemistry is not only a passive, it's a passive active, because you have an influence on your body chemistry. Via drugs, if you're a roid head, but also via your lifestyle, if you are natural, meaning that you could have potential for a good body chemistry, but since you're not active and you don't have a good diet, you don't rest enough, or your environment is toxic, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot. So... 8 and, and 1, body chemistry and training, end up really being in the same category. The training is always going to be the most important, and within the training itself, there is the control of the body chemistry. So that's what I would have said. Then, the other things that are inside of your control are also, by default, more important. So sleep, overall health, 
nutrition, stress, all of that is ranked high. And it's again telling that this guy, Truth Seeker, decided to put all of these things low. This is a typical mindset in people who achieve nothing in life. They always think that whatever they have an influence on is by default something that won't have much of an impact because it makes them, in a sense, sleep at night, that they can tell themselves that. So I want you to know that when it comes to deciding how big one can get, this is not the way to think about it. Look at frame, for example. He put frame number two. Frame is another example of something that looks like a passive, but is already a passive active because your frame is something you're born with, right? You could be born with insanely large and wide shoulders. That is correct. But if you never train, cool, you have wide shoulders, but you look like a scarecrow because you have no muscle on it. And I know many people like this who have a wide frame, but they have no muscle on it. So it doesn't look good. Meanwhile, you have people like me who are framelets with tiny, tiny shoulders and very narrow frames and small frames who put muscle on their frame and look good. Why? Because we understand that the active is more important than the passive and that when the active is fulfilled, the passive becomes stronger. To go back to the example of video games, let's say you have an active passive. The passive is again an aura around you that gives HP to your allies and you have also an active on the same spell when you use the active, the passive might become stronger, but you have to use the active. If you never use it, one, you will never know it's an active passive. Two, you are shooting yourself in the foot because you're only using 50% of your spell. The same goes for muscle insertions. After that, you have response to training. This one is interesting because I have heard people tell me, hey, NH, I train, but I don't see any results. I might be a non-responder. I blame PD users for that, just like I blame PD users for the obsession on genetics. Keep in mind, and I will make a video about that because it's very interesting historically to discuss it, but this entire LARP about genetics didn't used to exist. When you go back in, back in the days, in the 20s, the 30s, and you look at discussions around bodybuilding, about muscle building, genetics was scarcely mentioned. It was always a focus on training because they had their mindset proper. Now, it's the opposite. Every time you see a big guy, it's genetics this, genetics that. All of these guys tend to always be on drugs, which is ridiculous because, again, body chemistry, the active passive, is an important part of being big. So if you can modify it with drugs, then you can't say it's your genetics because you just boosted your hormonal profile with drugs. But that has led to all of the people around that, the viewers, the subscribers, and the people who are just observing this entire scenario to then believe that their lack of results was also due to genetics. And that is terrible again, because you end up thinking that your destiny, your results, and your success in life as a man is dependent on the cards you were given at birth. That is not correct. Unless you have a terrible disease that kills you at the age of five, whatever circumstances you are gifted with, there's always a way to work with it. And most of you guys who think you have bad genetics, you have average genetics, just like the rest of us, and you better work with it, because if you don't, you're going to stay small for the rest of your life. And so, as for the response to training thing, as I said, when you stop paying attention to the importance of training, you also stop being able to assess how to properly train, and therefore, if you don't get any results, is it any wonder? You don't even know what is supposed to get you results, because you have already convinced yourself that if you don't get any, it's your genetics. So you are not accremented to assess your result when, it's, when it comes to training. If you have been actually lifting weights for a long time and you see no actual development in your physique, there's one or two choice things going on. Either you are a freak of nature and you have somehow managed to bypass the natural reaction of the body that is trying to build muscle, or maybe you're just not training properly, maybe too intensely, maybe not enough volume. All of that, these are variables to be controlled. But if you ignore them, you're going to end up just like this guy. So be careful with that. The ones that are interesting and that he put in the middle because he didn't want to discuss them is age and stress. Stress because it's actually underrated, but he is correct in that stress has an impact on your muscle building abilities. If you're constantly stressed out and you produce cortisol nonstop, yes, it damages your muscle building, but not just that. 
it damages your health and your mental health as well. So stress is, to me, when we're talking about recovery, an aspect that is underrated. Control your stress, guys. Get it as low as possible, and you will see that your life is going to improve. That is a good point. Then there is age. Age is a double-edged sword, because for some people, age is like a, the, the l'épée de Damocles. It's Damocles' sword above your head that is going to fall down at the age of 35, and that's it. You're dead butt for the rest of your life. That's, non, that's complete nonsense. You can have a good physique into your 40s and 50s. If you keep training that has been proven in the past by people like Jack Lalanne, it is doable, but you have to actually train. Again, if you start believing that the passive overcomes the active, you're going to think that there is this curse of old age that is going to just infiltrate your life and slowly steal away your muscles. And so, as a natural reaction, you're going to start training less and less because you're going to think, well, I'm aging, so I must reduce my volume, right? Wrong. You are yourself creating the atrophy of your muscles by your lack of activity. You see that with people who do cuts too, who lose a ton of strength and muscles and they don't get why. It's because they preemptively reduced the volume and the intensity of their training when they started the cut without even assessing whether or not they were going to lose any performance at all. So you fed your muscles less tonnage, they atrophied and got weaker. Is that a surprise? It's not the result of your cut, it's the result of your training. It's not the result of your age that you're getting smaller, it's the result of your training, of course. And that is uh, also not included in the fact that most people think that you're in your prime when you're in your 20s, which is incorrect. You're in your prime when you're in your 30s, early 40s as a male. If you keep training properly, that is the truth. So, when it comes to this list... He has the, the actual categories right, but the, the uh, order is completely wrong. I'm not surprised. It's still a good base, because we're going to be able to use that to continue the discussion. Now we know how to get big. We know the factors, and we know which ones are the most important, with training being the number one by far. And if you want, I can quickly put them together for you, because I told you his order. Now let's see mine. I would say training number one. Then I would say... Overall health number number two, sleep number three, nutrition number four, stress number five, uh, age number six, response to training number seven, uh, muscle fiber distribution number eight, uh, maybe muscle insertions number ten, frame number eleven, and body chemistry number twelve. Because as I said, most of you are just average, and so it's no real price to put in to worry whether or not you're going to produce mass test. No, you won't, right? Most of us produce average testosterone and we get good physiques off of that. Most of you also who believe that you are low test are not low test. Your environment and your lifestyle is low test, not your body. So you have to pay it back to your body, improve the environment, and then your body will be back on the correct track. If you do TRT because you cannot wait and you want to bypass all of that, you are going to have to pay the price eventually as well. I've made videos about that. So that's for my ranking. I somehow added a number because his was only 11. I had 12. So I don't know how I got 12, but you get the gist of the uh, of le propos. Now, the next point of this video is... Truth seeker telling us that people always underestimate their body fat levels. And I agree with that. He's absolutely correct. It's, it's a truth of YouTube fitness that whenever someone tells you their body fat percentage, you can take off 5% and that is closer to what is actually accurate. The problem is what he makes with it. See, this guy is interesting because he, he has good ideas. He's not entirely stupid, but it would be better if he were. Because he's that category of man that is intelligent enough to gain access to a portion of the truth. And he immediately misuses that to make people just lose their hope. He is, in a sense, malevolently intelligent. And these types are really dangerous. Um, I remember someone telling me that they got sucked into that website because the dude had a certain way with words. And I agree. I know people like that. Uh, if you go on internet forums or 4chan, you will meet a plethora of these guys, of these men. These are men that gave up on life and our new goal in life is to make other people give up 
But they understand that it's always easier to go about it a roundabout way. So instead of just trying to tell them, hey, just give up, it's, it's useless. No, you have to make them believe that giving up is the smart choice and that the people who don't give up are the idiots. That's how it functions. So let's see how he's trying to go about that in this paragraph. So he says, most people overestimate uh, their leanness, they underestimate their fat. And he says that after a cut, people are surprised to see that they have to lose a ton more weight than they should have to see their abs. And he's right. But where he, what he doesn't understand in this case is that it's because it's people who most likely did aggressive books and therefore ended up with a lot of fat, which wasn't, wasn't needed in the first place. And that is also a direct result of pro bodybuilding. Because keep in mind that cutting and bulking is an invention of pro bodybuilding. It did not exist before that. If you look at the natural bodybuilders of the 20s and 30s and 40s, they didn't bulk and cut. They were always maintaining the same weight and gaining strength and muscle or very small changes in body weight, but never aggressive like we do and certainly never cyclical. If you went in a time machine and spoke to one of these guys and said, hey, I'm getting 20 pounds every winter season and I'm losing them every summer season. The guy would say, okay, is that for science? Are you doing a science experiment? Like, you're not going to gain anything like that. You understand that, right? Because you're constantly ditching and get, gaining the same weight and your performance struggles. So you get that at the end of the day, after 10 years, you will have had a weight loss and weight gain of 200 pounds total with no fluctuations of muscle mass. That would be obvious to them because they were doing things the proper way. But we're not because we're following the advice of people who take drugs. So that is something that he gets, he gets correctly again, but he doesn't understand the source. And so his advice is skewed because instead of understanding that this means that naturals need to gain weight slowly and not be afraid of having some fat as long as there is muscular development. No, he goes the extra way and says, oh, no, you actually want to be shredded, so you have to lose all of the extra weight and be a skeleton. And then these people wonder why they cannot be big. And when you look at what they estimate in terms of size that can, people can gain, it's always so incredibly low. It's because those standards are all out of whack. Now, we're going to get into something uh, that personally for me resonates with my past because it's something that is extremely prevalent in France. And for all of my French viewers, you know exactly what we're going to be talking about because the second I pronounce those three letters followed by that number, it's immediately going to give you Vietnam flashbacks from all of the times you've heard people discuss it as if it were established. Those words and numbers are PDC plus 10, PDC plus 10. For my English viewers that have never been exposed to that level of stupidity, that is, it's bro science mad in France created by people that are so small that they often confuse their pinky fingers with their dicks. PDC plus 10 means that for people to know how much size they can put on and how big they can get, you simply have to take your height and then add, uh, you, sorry, you simply have to take your body weight, then add 10, and that's it. That is what you're supposed to be. That is the perfect equation. And of course, it's in centimeters or else it wouldn't make any sense. So PDC plus 10 means that if you are 170 centimeters, that is your height. What you want to look at is you want to take your PDC. So PDC is body weight. And your body weight can be, for example, I don't know, 70 kilograms. You add 10 to that, so that's 170, that is the correct equation, meaning that it's a formula that is supposed to tell you exactly the weight you will be at your peak genetic limit, dependent on your height. And that means that pretty much anyone, the second they start training, can know immediately how big they can get. So the, the actual answer of the article is already found. I just told you, it's a ma mathematical, inevitable uh, result that can be just found like this within a second. So for me, for example, let's do it with me. Let's see how accurate it is. I am 183 centimeters, okay? My PDC, poids du corps, is right now 210. So that's 95 kilos, okay? Let's add 10 to that. 
that's 195 centimeters, okay? So, it's not correct. Hmm, interesting. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that the formula is wrong. Of course, you saw it coming. Um, and yet, it's tough to explain to you, but this is, this is to the rank of religion. Like, you have people in France who believe that this is true across the board and that there is no exception. And actually, interestingly enough, people use it as a sign that you're on drugs. If you can get above that, they say that it's because you're on drugs, because no one can go above. It's pretty much the French version of FFMI. The thing too with them is that if, let's say if, you manage to be above PDC plus 10, they'll tell you that it's because you're fat. So we go right back to this. It's the exact same mindset. To them, as a natural, you're either shredded and small, or you're big, but you're going to be fat. So it's... It's an impossible choice to make. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The problem being that they don't understand what fat means. Because for a lot of people, they'll say that PDC plus 10 is around 10% body fat. So for me, they'll say, well, you are right now a grand total of almost 20 pounds above what you're supposed to be at for your height, but it's because it's fat. So in their head, if I were to lose 20 pounds of fat, then I would be at the correct number for my height and I would finally have the correct physique. The problem is, why exactly would I do that? What exactly would be the point of losing that? Because those 20 pounds of fat on me look good. They are good pounds of fat. There is such a thing. If it's intramuscular and, vast and, uh, and uh, subcutaneous fat, it's good shit. It's great for naturals to have that. It circles the muscles, it makes everything look bigger. Why would be the point of me losing that? I would just end up looking small. Well, that is something that these people cannot answer because they have not yet understood the importance of a healthy body fat percentage and they also don't really know what body fat percentage is because I guarantee you that if I showed my body to most of these guys, they would tell me, okay, you're around 12%. Well, no, I am not. I'm closer to 16, 17%, but I have so much muscle that it doesn't look bad. This is also the equation they don't get in their PDC plus 10 idiocy. They don't understand that there is a ratio of muscle to fat that also modifies the entire argument. So if you're curious about that PDC plus 10 thing, do it for yourself. Um, it's, I, I don't know if I presented it the proper way because it does sound intricate when I use it. Trust me, it's the dumbest, lowest thing you can think of when it comes to math. It's really easy to get. So yeah, it's... Uh, Poids du corps plus 10. So for me, yeah, I, I'm supposed to be, according to my body weight, I'm supposed to be, what, 6'6", six, 6'5". Six, six, I'm nowhere even close to that. But I said that because this guy came up with his own thing. He didn't come up with PDC plus 10, although I'm certain that if someone were to tell him about it, he would be all over it because it's very cl uh, clearly aligned with what he believes. What he believes is this. According to your height, you are going to weigh a certain amount. Let me tell you what he believes someone who is my height is supposed to weigh. For someone who is 6 feet, he says that they must weigh 184 pounds. That's 83.5 kilograms. Let's use the PDC plus 10 formula to see if it's actually aligned and if it correlates. Does that guy have the same mindset than those French people who have, in reality, the same shitty physics that he has. Okay. So, poids du corps, 83 kilograms, plus 10, 183 centimeters. So, yeah. Somehow, I don't know how, I cannot explain to you why, he managed to find the exact same mathematical formula than these dudes. This is an example of synchronicity. And it's... It's skinny beta synchronicity. Like, it's amazing. It must be that their brains are on the same wavelengths and that in reality, it's a message of hope because it truly shows that globalism and, and the universality of humanity is achievable because apparently every single skinny dweeb on Earth thinks the same way. I mean, I think they're all connected to the, to like, to the motherboard and there's, there's someone somewhere that pilots them because... It's literally the exact same thing, the same exact equation he found. The only difference is that this guy never actually gave the equation. 
he simply just had the heights and he ranked the weights that you're supposed to be at. So for him, if you're 5'5", five five, you will be 135 pounds. This is impossibly small. Like, 5'9", you'll be 160 pounds. Does that seem appealing to you guys? Do you guys want to wait that much? I mean, it's it's so low. For someone who's 6'2", he has them at 90 kilograms. That's 5 kilograms underneath me. Someone who's 6'2", at 200 pounds, would be skinny. You would be relatively skinny with skinny arms and skinny legs. No wonder why people give up on natural bodybuilding with such low standards. That's incredibly low. But we're not done yet. Because another thing that I didn't mention is that he doesn't even take into account frame. Like, the same guy who told you that frame was number two in most important growth factors somehow forgot frame. Someone who's 6'2 with a small frame and someone who's 6'2 with a massive frame is not the same thing. They're not the same guy, and so one is going to be able to be heavier. But he forgot about that. And also, as I said, he never once takes into account body fat. Because in all of his calculations, he has the guy between 6 and 8% body fat. Which is a range that for natural is achievable, but not reasonable. And I would never tell any of you guys to do that. What would be the point? Again, go back to the natural bodybuilders of the 20s and 30s. None of them were even close to that. None of them were even 10% body fat. All of them were between 12 and 18, I would say. And they all looked massive. They were healthy, masculine, and strong. What exactly would be the point of us, the modern bodybuilders that are still natural, to walk around at these weights beyond just trying to imitate the standards of pro bodybuilding that are completely unnatural and unreachable? There is no logic behind these numbers. But it's insane to see that, to him, that's what we should be doing. We should all walk around shredded, have no libido whatsoever, be miserable with dark thoughts, hungry all day, just for the sake of what? Having shredded abs? What is the point? You can have good-looking abs at 10%. You can have good-looking abs at 15%. You can have good-looking abs at 17%, like myself. I've made a video about that already. It's this idea that that type of people have, that the only way to have a good physique is to be super lean. That's not true. Actually, for naturals, it's the opposite. You don't want to be too lean. It becomes, at some point, detrimental. So that's all his table of weights. But the worst thing about these weights is that he actually came back a few months afterwards to say that he believed that these numbers were too generous. He said that he no longer believed in the numbers presented above. He thinks they are too high for individuals who don't have an ultra big frame, high test levels, long muscle bellies, and an amazing response to training. For most lifters, the number will be 20 pounds less. So, let's go back to the table and take off 20 pounds. This means that for him, someone who's 6 feet should be 160 pounds. Can you spell eating disorder for me? Can you spell anorexia? Do you know how small I would be at 160? That's 50 pounds that I would lose. Do you think that if I lost 50 pounds, it would be 50 pounds of fat? I don't even think I have 50 pounds of fat on my entire body right now, speaking. This is how deluded this guy got, because this type of people, it's not just that they think that nothing is achievable and that no one can get big naturally. It's that they also get worse with time. Their psyche degrades because their passive is getting worse and worse because they're not active. And so they start believing that the passive was always bad in the first place and it's not their fault. So their standards go down. That's the thing with standards that need to be observed. Your standards will naturally degrade if you hang around people with low standards, but also if you start to believe that this natural degradation is a thing in the first place. It's exactly what happened to this guy. For the old joke, to him, if you're 5'5 five five and you want a good body, you'll have to be 115. Most women weight more than 115. It is insane to even write things like this 
Because I guarantee you that this has the potential to give kids who struggle with food eating disorders and bulimia, right? Because you're going to try and aim for weights that are way too low. This is why you end up with, again, kids who train for years, get no results and say, oh, it's my genetics. No, it's not. You just starve yourself. What is your body supposed to build with? You give it no food because you constantly try to have those shreds and those abs. And this is the direct result. Because in, in fact, this is the Pygmalion effect in, in just in its full glory. It's a self-destructing, uh, destructive prophecy. You tell people, hey, the only way to have a good physique is to be really low body fat and really low in weight. Then they don't feed themselves and barely train. They have bad physiques and you tell them, see, you tell them, see, I was correct. It's impossible to have a good physique naturally. So let's, let me guess. If we take 20 pounds off of that, maybe it'll be better. So now you lose even more weight and you become even more skinny. And guess what? The next step is less weight. Because it's always a game of taking away. Because when you take away, it takes away the onus of responsibility. Be very careful with that type of mindset and that type of advice of people who tell you that if you can truly match the numbers from above while being between 5 and 8% body fat, you would look amazing. Nope, you would look like an Auschwitz survivor. And that is the best case scenario because at least these guys got physical activity, as fucked up as it sounds. For this, can you imagine the way your body would look? I mean, when it comes to people who are forced to go through forced labor and who get starved and die... They can always say it wasn't their fault because it's not. They were forced. But here, are you going to inflict that upon yourself? For what gain? Exactly. It's, in a sense, mortification. Trying to be 5% body fat as a natural is just masochistic. It's just a way to hurt yourself. And it's not going to lead to any aesthetic results. I can guarantee you that. So, we have the perfect example of someone, as I said, who vaguely understands that there is a problem with the way body fat is discussed, uh, discussed on YouTube fitness and yet still falls for the trap. So he tells you that most naturals have more fat on their frame than they think. And then he goes back and tells you that you should be 5 to 8% body fat, not understanding what it means to a natural to be that low. It means death. It means the end of progress. It means being small forever. And the worst part about him is that in his comments, I just checked it out because I was curious, some guy gave him a strong rebuttal. He told him, hey, Sendo was 90 kilos for, for almost 5'10", 5'11". All of these guys from the past, Akenschmidt, Goner, Klilov, all of these guys were much higher in body, in body weight than you said, and they looked amazing and they were strong and they lived a long life. So how come? Plus, they lived back when there was no steroids. His answer is, those thoughts are fake. The pictures are fake. So to him, someone apparently had access to Photoshop in the 20s because the pictures we see of the old school bodybuilders are all fake. He ends by saying, get to 200 pounds shredded to the bone at any height below 6'4 and call me. Okay, why would anyone want to be shredded to the bone, right? The, the proposition is poisoned in the first place. No one is going to play that game because no one that is in the six feet range wants to be 200 pounds or lower. It's ridiculous. It would be suicide. And then someone said, have you ever actually looked at a photograph of Eugene Sando? He says, photos from the 18th century do not count. This is a level of intellectual dishonesty that is both ridiculous and a bit upsetting because it's not just that he lies and that he, he spouts and perpetrates dangerous lies, it's that he refuses then to stand behind them. So he's so is he such a coward that he will give standards that is going to get people hurt and then when you call him out and you say, hey, this is a counter-argument, what do you make with it? He retreats and says, oh, it doesn't count. Saying that something doesn't count is not an argument. It just means that you're wrong. And that guy is 100% wrong. And I'm looking in horror, thinking, how long do we have until those idiots in France start believing the same thing? How long until they start taking pounds off? Because you would be shocked 
at the amount of people in the French YouTube fitness that abide by the standards and that use it as an absolute. So the two them, they're exactly like him. If you try to argue with facts, they'll fire back by saying, well, PDC plus 10. So this is the formula. And if, if you're not within the range of that, then you're either fat or you're lying or you're on roids. These are the guys that stay small forever. It's the reason why your average French male looks like a bird with tiny little legs, no shoulders, no chest, tiny arms, and a head the size of a balloon. It's because they have fallen for the trap. They've fallen for the meme. They've fallen for the shredded aesthetics that has never led any natural to having a good physique because it's standards that we just simply cannot follow. So as for the actual answer to the question, how big can you get naturally? The answer is, I don't know. But if you look at people from the 20s and 30s and some naturals need to fit this right now, the answer is pretty fucking big. If a guy like me who's six feet with a narrow frame can get to 210 pounds with a full six pack with veins on my shoulders and biceps, where do you think the limit is for you? Because I'm not gifted in any way, I'm Mr. Average. So this means that most likely you too can have an amazing physique. You too can be high in body weight as long as you have a lot of muscle on your frame. Muscle that can only be built via one way, training. And I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that it was informative, a good time, and we will be revisiting the Nadi or Not website together at some point. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.